So I run a small Discord server, fullstack.chat, with the primary goal of helping individual developers or small teams build and launch successful products. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely come and hang out. Go to fullstack.chat and uh, click the link to join. Anyway, so I wanted a way to allow members to opt in and out of specific notification roles. For instance, I have a role named Daily Discussion, and we have a discussion on a daily basis about building and launching applications. I wanted a way to allow people to say, yes, I want to receive notifications for these, or no, I don't. And we have a bot that will generate a question, something that's kind of intriguing, allows people to really think about what, they're, what they want to respond with, and then notifies that role. Well, traditionally, the way to do this in a Discord server is to have a specific message set up in a specific channel that when users react to it, the bots will opt them in and out of the specific roles. And while that's great and all, I'm a developer who likes to overcomplicate things. So I figured, why not build a web panel that lets me do this myself? So when one of our members is signed into the Full Stack Chat website like I am right now, they get access to this My Profile link here. Now, if I click on Profiles, one of the things that we have here is a list of all the profiles for people who have created wanted links to their social media accounts. But I can come in here and I can customize my profile. And on top of things such as a display name, tagline, and then various links and resources for that developer, we're actually shown down here these two roles. There's the Daily Discussion role and the Full Stack .chat dev role. Now I pulled up the full stack chat Discord server in the upper right hand corner. You can see these are all of my roles. Uh, the ones I want to really call out here are the daily discussion role and the full stack dot chat dev role. Now, if I head back into the browser here and I uncheck daily discussion and save this, my profile settings are saved. But if I head back into Discord and then look at my profile once again, you will see that the daily discussion role is now removed. And if I go back in here, tick this box again and save it, it's going to add the role back into my account, as you can see right there. Okay, so you've seen how my form works. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really impressed with it, and I really like it. Now, instead of doing the traditional tech YouTuber thing and have you sit and watch me write some code on my computer, which hopefully if you're here, you know how to do that already, um, I figured why not walk through my process for designing this entire thing and walk you through the individual pieces of code and explain how things work behind the scenes along the way so you can have a better understanding how to construct something like this yourself. And if you really just want the code, the link to the source code is going to be in the description below. So in order to properly connect the user that is signed in to fullstack.chat to the user inside of Discord, I need a unique identifier for that user account within Discord. Now, one of the neat things about single sign-on with Clerk is the unique IDs of whatever the social login provider you are using is actually stored alongside that account. So in this actions file, which is just a collection of server actions that are used as part of the fullstack.chat website, I'm using this current user function, which is part of the clerk next JS server side helper functions as part of the clerk SDK. So this is a JSON representation of that current user object. And if we zoom in just a little bit on this external accounts array, we can see here that there is an identifier of OAuth underscore Discord indicating that this is the account information for my Discord account. And then in here, I have this external ID value, which is actually my unique identifier inside of Discord. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to find the entry in this list, which I'm only letting people sign in with Discord, so it should be the only entry here, that has the provider of OAuth Discord. And then once I have that information, I can actually use the external ID property of that external account information in order to get the unique identifier of my member inside of Discord. So once I've reached this far, I've effectively have a way to tie back the user from the fullstack.chat website back to Discord. Now let's take a look at what happens when a user actually hits sign. I'm gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom and there is this update user info function. Now that what this is going to do is it's going to take the updated values and store them inside of the database that I'm using to have the profile information for that user, such as their Twitter account, whether or not they wanna be public, uh, their display name, and so on and so forth. But the last piece here is this await sync roles, which I'm calling. I'm passing in data.userID, which is the unique ID for the Discord user, and then selected roles, which is just an array of identifiers for the specific roles. Now, navigating to sync roles, which is just a little bit higher inside of the same file, we can take a better look at what's going on here. So now one of the things Full Stack Chat also has is our, our trusty bot, Walter, which does some fun, interesting things for us. But because I have a bot, I have a bot token. And because I have a bot token, I can call one of the many API endpoints that are available to me to either get information about my guild or my server and the users are part of it or make changes to the user. In this case, we are actually pulling back the user. So I have guild ID as part of an environment variable, which is stored alongside the Next.js application. This, this website is built in Next.js. And then my Discord user ID is that external ID that was pulled from the clerk user. 
Now, once I have the member and I have the role IDs that are trying, that are attempting to be saved, I'm actually going to double check the IDs against this configurable roles, which is just a static data structure that shows the two hard-coded roles that users can select from. This is used both to set and remove roles on a user account in Discord, as well as render this information on the front end. You can see I even have a description here, which will eventually make it into the front end. It just hasn't quite yet. Anyway, back into our actions.ts, I'm gonna create two empty arrays, roles to remove and roles to add. And as their names suggest, each of these arrays will contain a list of role IDs that will be removed from the user, and then also a list of IDs that will be added to the user. So then we're going to iterate over the permitted roles and then check against whether or not that ID exists in the array of IDs that was passed into my function. If the roles the user should have assigned is included, we're gonna add it into the roles to add array. Otherwise it goes into the roles to remove array. Moving down the function just a little bit, I'm then going to create an array of promises. So this way I can execute multiple fetch requests simultaneously against Discord's API. I could iterate over these sequentially and just do one at a time, but for performance sake, I like the idea of just executing them all in one shot and then getting the responses back. So instead of just awaiting fetch, we're instead going to push the fetch request into the promises array. And at the end of this entire thing, we're going to call promise dot, we're going to await promise dot all, and then pass in those list of promises, the array of promises as a parameter into that function. And this will do exactly what I described. Instead of executing them one at a time, it executes them all simultaneously and then returns them all back, resulting in our code being just a little bit faster. As we're looping over the roles to remove and the roles to add, one of the things I am checking is to see if that role already exists on the user. And this further reduces the number of API calls that need to be executed because if a member doesn't have a role ID, there's no real reason to remove it. So we're not going to call the function that does that. Now, one of the things that could make this process a little bit better and more dynamic is not having to hard code these configurable roles, but instead using the Discord API to call back a list of available roles and then as an administrator, be able to select which roles can be configured on and off for specific users. Although I personally haven't taken that step yet today, perhaps it's something you can build and let me know how it goes. So as a recap of this process, we have the full stack chat website, which when a user saves their profile, they'll have a list of role IDs that need to be set inside of Discord. We're then going to utilize the Discord API and make a request to it to get the current roles for a given user, the one that matches the ID that we got from our clerk user information. With this information, we're going to create two separate arrays, one that contains a list of roles to add and one that contains a list of roles to remove. Based on the permitted roles, we're going to check things. In this scenario, we have two roles that actually match on both sides. We don't have to do anything with them, but we also have a role that needs to be added and a role that needs to be removed. We're gonna create the necessary promises to add and remove those two roles and append them into an array of promises. We're then going to use promise.all to make those requests in sync to the Discord API. And because Discord clients are connected via WebSockets, the roles will be updated on the devices almost instantly. So as mentioned earlier, all of the source code for this is in a repository that's linked in the description below. I even went as far as to creating a dedicated branch for this video so you can follow along with the code exactly as you saw it here today. If you like this kind of content and want to see more of this style of content for me specifically where I walk through things that I've built and explain my thought process and walk through how things work, let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to do something totally different, still let me know in the comments below because I need engagement, please. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.